Hi, it's Sports Replays here. And yes, this is how I went this week in Supercoach. Uh, look, mediocre score again. I still went up in the ranks. Um, my ranking was 17,232, which is okay. It was looking to be on track. Uh, but you sort of fall apart in the, in the last few matches. Just everything seemed to well, not completely fall apart. Like, still all right, but not as good as what I was expecting. So first off, we got... Jordan Dawson, 78, a little disappointing. I think that's his worst score of the season, considering he did well at previous weeks. And look, if that's his lowest, I mean, that's okay, but it's still not quite good enough for what we want and what we've been expected of him so far. And he's done pretty well for the last few rounds previously. And look, we'll just have to cop it in the chin. If that's the lowest, that's okay. But yeah, a little frustrating. I mean, Adelaide weren't that great against Hawthorne, so... I mean, I uh, wasn't expecting the biggest score, but that being said, you could have got bananas as well since they're playing Hawthorne, but that's not the case. That's not always going to be the case. So, Jack Sinclair, 105, which is all right. I mean, it sounded like he got like 120, but I thought he deserved that, to be honest. They're one of their best players, St. Kilda. But St. Kilda actually got smashed in Supercoach scoring, which is kind of interesting because Carlton actually had... A, Quite a few more super coach points, but uh, they end up actually losing, which is kind of unusual. Usually, this better team usually has more super coach points, but sometimes that's not always the case. And it, that wasn't the only other match as well where that was the case. So, look, 105 is okay. I did trade him in, I think, for Jimby, uh, which looks like an okay selection. He still went Danny Price, Sinclair. He's actually a bit cheaper this week, so it probably could have been a bit better off, but. Picking up this week, but you know, it just sort of suited the, suited the structure, and I needed to get, you know, a rookie who's um, you know, expected to go down in price. I don't know, just cash in on it. Uh, Ridley eighty two, a little disappointing from Ridley. Um, look, I mean, he had a, just a mediocre game, nothing crazy, nothing, you know, not terrible either. But I sort of want a bit more from Ridley to be honest for his price point. And it's just one of those selections which I probably shouldn't have... I shouldn't have traded him in. And trading him in instead of Dacos at the time was a big mistake. I mean, I wasn't expecting Dacos, you know, to you know, get the score he's been getting. He shouldn't be. You know, this second year, second year is just... He shouldn't be getting these mega scores. I mean, I'm not too sure how long that's going to last. We'll wait on that. That's another rot which I can go on about. I'll just have to wait and see on that. But Ridley, he's going to be a hold for now. I'm just, just be, the other issue is with this side. Want, there's other players I want to get out before he Ridley. Ridley could be another luxury trade aid option, which I might either do at the buys or later after the buys. We'll see how we go with how the side happens, if there's injuries and etc. Uh, Conor McKenna, 57. Yes, another player disappointing as well. I mean, the Brisbane in general, in terms of the super coach school, they didn't really. Supercoach scoring didn't score too well. Brisbane, actually, GWS had scored him in terms of Supercoach points. And it's another game where I think, oh, really? I mean, Brisbane were up by seven goals and won by like four or five goals, but they still lost the Supercoach scoring. So it just goes to show that Supercoach scoring doesn't necessarily mean you're always a better team. But I guess when you gather more disposables when you're opposition, that's, you know, it's more likely going to occur. That's just what you do with it. So McKenna, 57, he might have to go this week. Uh, he's another one that I either have to hold this week or get rid of next week, most likely, depending on how things go and what other players perform and don't perform. Another player which I probably would definitely going to get rid of is Liam Jones. 53 is not good enough. Um, and he has to go, essentially. It's just, yeah. See you later, Jones. Uh, who am going to get rid of for him? Maybe that Mitchell guy from Hawthorne, if he gets selected. Let me check to see how he went this week. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, Will Mott, 39. Another player who's probably... is in that position where he's probably going to have to be cut from my side, unfortunately. 39's not good enough at all. Didn't even make a 50. I understand he's a young player, but look, another another line who didn't score that well either. So, you know, there's quite a few players I want to get rid of this week, but if either do, either you down... Either, do a trade boost again, but then I've only got two trade boosts to want to save it. You know, it's one of those difficult situations again this week. You know, it's upgrade season. It's a 
it's a bit more difficult time of the year of the season to really trade, I find. And it's just going to be frustrating, to be honest. Who I'm going to trade out, who I'm not. And will not be in that mix, that mix depending on his break-even. Have to check their break-evens as well. And Lockie Cowan, another player who's performed poorly as well. I mean, he is a rookie prize, but we want a little bit more, I guess, with Castrian going to be tight, I reckon, in the next few weeks. Um, so he's uh, he's going to be hold. He just hasn't made enough. And if he can get like a 60 or a 70 or 80, I'm not too sure if he keeps his spot. Chin Cotter seems to be another player we're going to have to pick up. Pick up. I might even pick him up either this week or next week, depending if he gets selected. He played all right, so he sh- should be safe next week. That's never a guarantee. Um, and Constable, yeah, he just hasn't been playing the last month, which is a bit frustrating. So he's a hold, really, for now as a loophole option. I mean, Gold Coast, uh, they really should be playing Constable. He did a, he's playing all right in the twos. I mean, Gold Coast, second side, is actually doing pretty well. So, I mean, that's sort of a good, a good indicator. Where they're heading, you'd think. I mean, unfortunately, their ones isn't doing that great. But their VFL side's doing quite well. So, look, Constable, he, or he should be getting a game. He's too good to be in the seconds, I reckon, but not quite too good enough for the ones. Did all right the first two games. So, that's yeah, a bit of a rot with Constable. Not happy with that, with um, what Stuart Dew's doing with that pick. I mean, he, I mean, at least pick him in for a week. He doesn't do that well, then, yeah, put him in the twos again. Uh, on to the midfield with Clary disappointing 98 I mean failed to make 100 and look I mean you've had lucky I didn't have him as captain I was sticking at one point but he apparently was a bit of an injury scare and he still ended up playing but he wasn't quite his best I mean he still just got under 100 but yeah I mean anyone if any player of his price point scoring under 100 it's not good enough lucky I didn't captain him but on to Bontepelli, 182 for normal. Like I took the you know loophole option here. And he's probably the reason why I've gone up in rankings this week. Because it ended up being one of the few things that actually went well for me this week. In the end, after having a good start to the round. But look, yeah, 182. Uh, he's not going to get that every week. But you're banking the cat. You're banking his score. You know, his VC score every, t- every day of the week. Uh, Luke, Luke Davies Uniac, 72. A little disappointing, yes. and this is where the you know downfall sort of started as well for me this week. After having a good start, is it you know, 72 is just not good enough for a player of his ability and his price point. I mean, North Hill were disappointing against Gold Coast. You would think they'll do a bit better against Gold Coast. I mean, they've actually done poorly the last few times they've played a Gold Coast, to be honest. So it wasn't really a surprise. But look, we need players like LDU to lift. You know, to help our sides out. And he just hasn't done that the last few weeks. And I traded him as well after he scored well the first two weeks. So, look, I mean, it's a hold, but not everyone has LDU. It's sort of a mini, not not a huge pod, but, you know, if he scored like another 30, 40 points, that would have bumped me up to getting closer to that, you know, 10,000 ranking. And it's just a bit, a bit frustrating when you have players that not everyone owns, that not too many people have or... You know, under 20% own, and they don't do particularly well. It sort of kills you a little bit. And, yeah, Green was obviously not playing. So, hopefully, that probably explains why, you know, the average scoring was a bit lower this week. Uh, because you have to pr- bring in a rookie, and then you get the rookie score, and then end up getting, you yeah, know, we'll talk about Johnson in a minute. Uh, Will Setterfield, 76, yeah, not the best. I mean, was it doing particularly that great this match and I mean, none of the Essendon players did extremely well in terms of scoring which you know considering the game was quite close you would think there'd be a bit more high scoring but look 76 if that's his floor I mean uh, I mean he's gone down in price so which is a bit frustrating so will, will I hold him I probably will I do I want him to get to 500 then I'll probably have to trade then I'll probably trade him out then if I can or if it's suitable I mean, it's just, uh, considering he, you know, got 147 new a few weeks, like about a month ago, it's, it's fallen off a little bit when, since people have brought him in. But I'm sure there's bigger problems we have this week, and he's going to be a hold. On to Jacob Popper, 94. 
He's got his season average there. Look, just your standard game. He looked good early, but sort of died off in the last quarter, just like Richmond did. You know, considering Richmond were the, you know, great in the first half, but you know, weren't able to maintain it and just lost it in the last quarter. I mean, I could slowly see that happening in the last five minutes of the second quarter. I can see Melbourne slowly get on top, and they slowly grind the win out, Melbourne. And end up winning, but yeah, Hopper ninety four not terrible. He's a hold. Probably expected a little bit more from Hopper. You know, an average of a hundred would be great if he could get to the five hundred k. That'd be excellent. Uh, James Warple ninety eight, which is all right. He was ex- you know, on track to get like one twenty at one point. He had a great first half of sixty one. Then I was expecting, oh cool, you know, maybe we can get like a one ten or one twenty. And I was hoping for that, but he just falls short of a hundred. And I don't think he's got a hundred yet. Warple has he? I don't think he has. Um, if not, it'd been just. Uh, so 98. Um, yeah, not not too good um, in terms of his second half. But look, he still went up in price. And he's going to be a hold. Still reckon I can get more money out of him. If you get to the 500k, that'd be great. But it's looking unlikely at this point. And it's been one of those tradings that's been, uh meh. Nah. Hasn't been a disaster, but hasn't been the best either. And you've, then you've got Will Ashcroft, 76. That's average from him, and he's probably another player which I'm thinking, uh, should I get rid of him? You know, should I trade him in for another player, for a rookie? He's going to be one that might be out of my side this week. Um, and on to the bench, Noah Long didn't play, had an injury, which is a little disappointing because had to field on a weaker rookie in M. Johnson. 35, which is better than fielding M. Roberts, which is just uh, trading in these two players has been a bit of a disaster, to be honest. I mean, a bit unfortunate with Roberts' injury. He wasn't doing that great before that. And he's going to be another player that's... Uh, he's going to say his, score, his best score was a 90, but he's like, his average is 30, which I've never seen before. So he's got an okay ceiling. He's just four. It's just, I think it's more to do with the time he's been getting. His time on ground hasn't been the best, I must say. And it's just, it's one of those fringe players. This is like to be like a you know, terrible trading now. Been a bit of a disaster. So those two tradings haven't really particularly worked well. I mean, I don't even know if they play next week. You know, Johnson and Roberts. And I've got basically hardly any rookie cover now in my midfield, depending if Noah Long's playing. And he might have to hold on a bit longer than what I wanted from him as well. So uh, what was looking being all right in the midfield cover is now looking, you know, not the best and it's looking pretty slim, which is arguably probably just as frustrating as some of the underperforming premiums because, you know, it's going to increase the chances of me getting a donut just in case if someone gets suspended like a Tom Green or injured. So I'll just have to wait and hold on that for the time being. Um, on to the rucks. Here we've got Sean Darcy. 137, and he's been probably one of the shining lights of the round for this side. And look, holding on to him has been an excellent idea. A lot of people got rid of him after round two, but aside, oh, that's probably not a good idea. I don't like trading premiums in general, and I can avoid it unless he's injured. You know, I wasn't really going to trade him out. And look, he's just proved those people wrong who got rid of him. And I'm happy with holding on to him. He's banged out 400 plus scores in the last four weeks after a lot of people traded him out. And he's actually gone up in price. He's actually have a, a, a significantly higher average than Marshall now. You know, Marshall might be one of those players where I might have to trade out. A, might be a luxury trade to English, which is probably the best option going forward. But like with all the Ruckman, they all have their injury risk. And it's just, yeah, I'll, I'll just have to hold with the Rucks for the time being. I'm not going to make any changes unless one of them gets injured. Because it's just, you know, the rush is just, yeah, you just hope that just nothing just goes, just falls into pieces, is what I'm trying to say. On to Radagalia. Uh, yeah, f- fantastic from Radagalia. He's performed well the last few weeks. And he's actually been, a, you know, a good rookie. or well, not a rookie, but like a good selection after being looking like, you know, a mediocre selection uh, the first few rounds. But he slowly made his way into the side and, sort of build up that confidence again. And same with Geelong, they're playing a lot better now. We'll see to see if he keeps up that performance. I'm not too sure if he can do it in the next following weeks, but he's going to be a hold. He's going to make us some a bit more money. And he's probably another one should we flip or keep it, hold him to the buyers and get rid of him. 
for a rookie to generate cash somewhere else to bring another player somewhere else. I'm not too sure, but he's just going to be the be a good cover for now. On to the four line, Josh Dunkley, 104. A little disappointing from Dunkley. I mean, another player went berserk in terms of Supercoach scoring. I know Cameron did well. It was probably the best play and was probably the best on ground, to be honest. So, look, kind of a four. Okay, I guess. I mean, I'm not going to go, you know, in too much detail with Dunkley. Everyone's got him. So, it doesn't really matter no, as much. And Tarana, 144, finally has a good game, which is what we've been waiting for. Well, I mean, uh, you know, an outstanding game. And it's probably one of his best games of you know, he's played. So, look, he's actually, you know, high average in Dunkley now, uh, which is, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Um, yeah, so hopefully he can keep this, you know, this hard work up, you know, this you know, form up. On to Rosie, 126 from Rosie. You know what I mean, that's a good score from Rosie. Um, it's better than his season average. And he's looking like an okay selection now. Not quite as good as Toronto. I think Toronto is a few years older. So I will give Rosie that. He's still a bit younger. And he's he may perform better later in the season. We'll just have to you know wait and see with Rosie. I reckon it's just you know, it's been an okay selection. A lot of everyone everyone has Rosie, well most people, so it's you know, it's sort of a huge deal what he gets as long as he doesn't get injured. Yeah, speaking of a player who hasn't really done that well this round, and you know, Goulden, um, with a score of 47, it's just yeah, not good enough. His worst game in a while, and pretty much Sydney's worst game, what, for what, what, last 30 years, I believe? Last 20, 30 years. I mean, it was worse than a grand final performance, which you know, should be too hard to beat. But look, yeah, they were shocking in the second half. You know, Sydney, they were just terrible, you know, the worst side this week, by a fair distance, I must say. And look, I mean, I'm sure he will bounce back next week. Same with Sydney, they'll perform better. I mean, they've got GWS, so they should be winning that game, but it's not a guarantee the way they've been playing. Sydney, they got smashed against Bell, and they got smashed against Geelong. You know, they seem to be, you know, just basically bullying on their you know, the average sides, but they seem to be struggling against the top team, so... I've got question marks on Sydney. I've got a bit of question marks on Gordon as well. He has a great ceiling, but his floor's quite low, which is why I was a bit hesitant on pre-season, but he had that one good game and everyone basically followed. Everyone just went and got him in. But, look, we'll just have to hold him. He's not the biggest issue with his side. But if he does it again, he probably has to go. Some, that could potentially be a trade-out. Maybe Caniglio. Looks like Kinigolo actually has a higher average now than Goulden. So I think Goulden was, I think Kinigolo was a higher starting price though. So put people off a little bit as well. So I think Kinigolo is a player that we might have to bring in at some point, which I might do this round potentially. I'll just have to have a look. Uh, yeah, so that's Goulden. Um, Harry, Harry Sheasel. Uh, 53, by far his worst game. Uh, look, he, it's his first year. I mean, you know, I'm not expecting him to perform well every game. And he's done phenomenal. Well, I mean, it's some of the best scoring we've seen from a first-year player for the first, what, five, six weeks. And he's performed, you know, a lot better than I expected. You know, he may get, like, I was expecting maybe 100, one or two hundreds. But, yeah, look, he's done us wonders. This has probably been one of the best selections this season. And he's just... Yeah, I'll hold on to him for now. Because he's got that defensive, you know, swing as well. So I guess I don't have a forward I don't have a forward defender, unfortunately, in my side. So that's I can't just put him under put him in the back line, which was probably where he should be because it looks like our defence is a bit weak, the rookies in defence. And he's definitely one of the stronger ones there. So yeah, I should have thought that out a bit more thoroughly. Uh, now on to Chandler, 85. Uh, he's, you know, you know, he's got a decent score. He performed well. Chandler was one of the reasons why Melbourne won as well. He got a few good goals. And look, yeah, a lot better than last week. And he's going to be uh, probably a hold now, I must say, because that will lower his break even. He was looking one of the last week. I was thinking about treading him out. Should I? I was on the fence about it, but I end up didn't. 
and end up paying dividends. Uh, Jay Van Rowen, I mean, look, this guy sort of won Melbourne the game in the end, that last quarter he, where he got bulk of his scoring. And he got a bunch of, you know, a couple of good marks, got a couple of goals at crucial times. And it sort of saved him his game. And it sort of saved Melbourne as well. So he's, yeah, he's a hold. He's going to generate some money now, which is great because, you know, cash generation was looking pretty slim. And on to Davey, 44 was not the best for his return. A little bit frustrating. I mean, I was hoping he could get a couple more goals or two. And look, I mean, he is his first year. He's made us 90 grand. Uh, I was hoping he could get a few 80s or 90s. I guess against a side like Collingwood, you know, not expecting it, but, you know, maybe a 60 or 70. If you got a couple more goals, Essen probably would have won and probably should have won. Gosh, that's another raw. That's a whole separate video, which I might make on, which I might talk about. Um, so, look, overall, not a disaster of a round, but it just sort of fall apart, you know, basically in the second half of the round and, you know, players performing a lot lower than I want. Premiers, disappointing scores, particularly with an LDU, Goulden. I know a lot of people have Goulden, so it's sort of a big deal, but some players, some people didn't have Goulden and those people didn't have an advantage over 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 everyone else. At least I didn't have Miller. Some people did. At least I didn't bring him in. Gosh, that's just... I feel bad for those people did because he's a great player. You know, it's a huge loss for Gold Coast. You know, in saying that, look... What I'm going to do for trades, and, um, what we're going to do here is probably get rid of uh, get rid of a Jones for a Mitchell. Is probably what I'm probably going to do here. If Mitchell plays, or well, I'm just trying to think what he get. If he scored decent, let's have a look at that. Because you know I want to get that cash generation and get rid of um, Liam Jones because. He's just, yeah, I can't have a player like him scoring that well. I need to check his break even too, but, but Sam US Mitchell, 79. Yeah, so he's definitely a trade even if he, and he should get, he should be selected now after that performance. I mean, Hawthorne did all right on the weekend, should have won. Sort of choke, but that wasn't the biggest choke on the weekend, sort of my side. I mean, it was a shocking last quarter. Should have beaten Collingwood, actually tipped us, and I would have got nine for nine if we did. So that's one trade. He's definitely a trade in Mitchell. Yeah, hopefully he gets selected. He should be selected of that performance. And Hawthorne aren't trying to, you know, they're not going to make the finals this year, Hawthorne, so they might as well just try to play these young players. Uh, in terms of another player we want to trade out, probably a Wilmot, I'd say. Any of the midfielders I could trade out, uh, I'm not too sure on that. Maybe an it Will Ashcroft is probably another trade in I'm thinking about doing. Who's another defender? Maybe a Chincotta. Get rid of a Wilmot and a Chincotta. Then maybe we could do a trade in and bring in, I don't know, another. Who's another midfield I could probably bring in? Maybe a Laird. I'm not too sure if I have enough points for that. Uh, was it Chincotta? I mean, he's only played one game. So it's probably not the best week to do it. Uh, Chincotta, what did he get? Yeah, 67. That's great. So Chincotta there. It's 340k. We then can get what do a trade boost and get in um what you call again a Will Ashcroft or a, a Rory Laird I must say let's look at Rory Laird Adelaide so Laird Laird Laird, Laird. where is he be at the top there's his dent six thirty four he's a player we'll bring in. And I'm running out. Of, only about two boosts left after this, so we have to be careful what I do. But that's what I'm probably going to go with for now. This could change for now, but it's important to get rid of those, you know, defenders who aren't scoring. And they look, they would have outscored them anyway this week. So yeah, that's probably ideal. Get that extra cash. Get a lead in. Uh, and that should basically. And then since Green's going to be playing in, pretty much no. No rookies on field in the midfield because we're pretty weak there now. After which, after what looked promising, which is probably what I want. So hopefully Green plays. You know, it should be decent midfield now. I'm sort of happy with that. Maybe get rid of Warple at some point, and then hopefully next week I'll be able to bring in another decent defender at some point as well because I've still got three rookie defenders, 
And if Constable's not playing, it's just going to not provide too much depth. In terms of the rucks, that's a hold. Forward line looks to be a hold for now. Nothing too major I need to do, but it's just the midfield depth. It's probably the major concern with this side. And hopefully another rookie. If another rookie is on this week, I'll have to have a look. But that's what I'm doing for now. That could change. But that gets rid of the, you know, the dud defenders in my side. All right, well, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Yeah, mediocre week, but not the worst.